H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Hey guys, this is Sirish here and welcome to the course Python 3. In this session, I'm going to talk about how to set up the development environment for Python 3 on your Mac computers. If in case you are using the Windows, most probably you can follow the same steps because these steps are common between the Windows, Linux or Mac users. But since this is a very basic or the beginner level of uh, setup, so it's pretty much common across all the platforms. All right, so why I'm saying this is for beginners only because this is a very common and very basic setup of Python on your computer. So you, j you just want to install Python and run some Python programs immediately. If that is the case, then this is what the steps you need to follow. But when you actually deep dive into the project developments, like if you are a serious de Python developer, then this is not the way how you set up your Python. So that's there is a different and advanced way, like uh, you will be having the different virtual environments for each Python runtime environment. And for each Python versions, you might need to maintain some different types of virtual environments specific to different type of projects. So let's say if you're working on three different Python projects on one single computer, then you'll be having, you might maintain like three different Python virtual environments for each project with, with their each dependencies or each modules with respect to a specific project. So that type of setup is really needed for you when you actually become a very serious developer for Python. And I will be showing that in a different session. But in this session, we'll be targeting only for uh, a basic setup of Python and exclusively for the beginners who wanted to kickstart running the Python programs immediately. All right. So part of the session, we are going to cover the three different steps. So that's the agenda here. So one, we are going to download and install Python 3 on our computer, like the Mac OS. And then the second step is like, we need to have an IDE, like an integrated development environment. So we need to have some IDE to write our Python scripts and to execute the scripts. So for this, we are going to choose an IDE. And the step three, we actually create a Python file, a Python script, and then we will write some simple as a small one line code or some printf statements, and then we will run the python program and we'll make sure that the, the script is executed and we can see the output in the terminal or in the console all right so let's start with uh, each step so on the left side of the screen uh, you can see the python.org website so from this website we can download python 3 but before downloading python 3 if you are a mac user by default your operating system will be shipped with Python 2.7 version, right? So if you want to actually check uh, whether the Python 2.7 is default, uh, I mean, it, it is a default version or not on your Mac computer, you can actually use this terminal, like the terminal window, and you can type Python. So when you type Python and hit enter, you got 2.7.10, right? So that is a default Python, which is installed by the Apple on your Mac computer. But like I said in our previous session, we are not dealing with Python 2 here. So we are learning Python 3. So in order to exit, in order to come out of this um, Python interpreter, so you just need to type exit and you'll be out of it, all right? So now let's download the Python 3 uh, from the python.org uh, website. Like I said, this is a very basic way of installations. So you can go to the download page and here you can click on the download python 3.7.4 and once you hit download you will get the uh, .dmg file or the respective installation file and once you click on that file so you will see a, a python installer window here all right so the installation is completed successfully and we have python 3.7.4 on our computer so let's close this all right so 
Now, if you want to make sure whether the Python 3 is installed successfully or not, you need to run Python 3. Like you need to specifically mention the version of the Python. Now, when you enter Python 3, now you see the response as Python 3.704 is so-and-so installed under so-and-so license. And if you want some help or copyright, uh, you know, if you want to know those details, you can you can type those commands and you can get the information. So now we have 3.7.4, like the Python 3 is successfully downloaded and installed on our Mac computer. And this is what uh, this is how we can see that the Python 3 interpreter is showing us when we run the command like Python 3. So now uh, if you look at this uh, terminal window, you will see like three greater than symbols, right? Now that is called the Python interpreter. So since we have Python 3 installed and now we are accessing the Python 3 interpreter. So now you can here, you can actually directly write your Python scripts or the command from the Python programming language, which will actually execute and you can see the response also. For example, let me use the print statement. So right now I'm using the Python 3 interpreter, which is in the interactive mode and directly I'm writing the Python commands here. Let's say I write hello world. And when I hit enter, you see the output is printed like hello world. All right, so this is in the interactive mode and this is what we call it as an interpreter. And this interpreter is very specific to Python 3. All right, so now if I use the same command in Python 2, like if you want to execute the same command in Python 2, then you should access the Python 2 interpreter. Now we are in the Python 2 interpreter. So now here you can copy the same command. All right. So now when I hit enter, you can see the hello world. All right. So let me try the another format of the same command without the braces like print. Hello world. All right. Still, the things worked here. I think I did some uh, type error there. That's fine. So let's come out of this Python 2 and let's access the Python 3. Now we are in the Python 3 interpreter. Now let's use the same command like print hello world with the braces. All right. So now you see here when we are using the Python 3. And when we use the print statement without having the open and the close braces, then this is what it is showing an error, like there's a syntax error. But the same command worked in the Python 2. So probably you might have understood based on the Python version. So the command which worked in the Python 2 interpreter, now it's not working with the Python 3 interpreter because there's a version change. Now the things will change, the syntaxes will change, right? So that is what I would like to show you here. All right, so now we are coming out of the Python 3 interpreter. Now everything is closed. All right, so Python 3 is installed successfully. All right, so I just want to repeat this one more time. By default, the Mac users, by default, the Mac users will get Python 2.7 version on their operating system. And now what we did is we just installed 3. Dot some x so we installed the 3. Dot x version of python on the same computer and now i can access 2.7 python version and also i can execute 3. Dot x python scripts also because they both have two different interpreters i can able to access python 3 interpreter separately and python 2 interpreter separately and i can run both type of programs on one single computer so this is something which you need to aware of. All right. So we are done with our first step that is download and install Python 3. And there's one more thing which I need to, uh, uh, which I need to tell you that is the PIP. PIP. PIP is a, is a default package management tool which, uh, which ships with the Python. And this is a default package management uh, tool. Like, like if you take any programming language, by default, there is something called modules. Uh, uh, or dependencies or packages or libraries, right? 
So this is something uh, which every programming language is in common. So all these things will actually extend the programming language features. Now, similarly for Python also, we have uh, Python packages, which are like external modules, like on top of the core Python programming language, we also need those packages to be installed, download and install in our projects. If you take uh, Java, we have something called dot jar files. And if you take JavaScript, we have something called node modules. Python, we have something called packages, like the Python packages. So every programming language will be having this kind of uh, module structure. Now, PIP is a tool which helps us to download those packages into our project. So by default, the PIP will be installed. So let me come out of this interpreter. And uh, now you can see like uh, which PIP. So what is this which command? So which command is 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 one of the command which can tell you uh, from where this from where this so and so software is accessible. Now I'm just trying to make sure whether the PIP three is installed and it is installed into the user local bin path. And also I can know uh, Python three is installed right so i can say which python 3 and in the same path you have user local bin pip3 so pip3 will ships by default with python 3 and pip is a package management tool which is a default package management tool for python which is used to download and install the python packages into your project all right so that's all about the first step and let's look into the second step the best ide for the best ID from the open source world is VS Code, the Visual Studio Code, VS Code. So this is really, really interesting. I use this, this editor for JavaScript, for Java, and also for Python too. All right, so let's go ahead and download the VS Code. So VS Code is actually coming from the Microsoft. So Microsoft is the one who developed this editor. And here you'll see on the download option, you can download the VS Code for Mac. All right, so once you download, this is how the VS Code editor will looks like. Okay, so it's it's very straightforward. You can just download and install the uh, installer for the VS Code and you will see the editor open, you know, like the, the one which you see on the screen on the left hand side. So once you install the VS Code, it's not done yet because by default, VS Code it will not support for the Python programming language. So what you need to do is you need to install an add-on called Python for VS Code. So when you install this add-on, your editor is ready to uh, work with Python environment, like with, like for the Python programming language. So this is how you will see, uh, you can go to your add-on section, and this is how you can install an add-on on the VS Code. And when you search for Python, the very first option you will see here, so, so this is the add-on which is required for us. And once you install that, then your editor is ready to use for Python development. And these are the add-ons. And this add-on is again coming from the Microsoft. So the editor is coming from the Microsoft and the add-on is built by Microsoft. So it's it's really very good. And this editor is right now, it's, it's fully supported for Python programming language. All right. So there is one more thing which you need to do on this editor in order to run your Python scripts. So let's close this. All right, so first let's start creating your first Python file. So once you create a file new, just save it as my first program.py. So remember the Python script, the Python file extension will be .py. So once you click on .py, uh, you will be seeing you may not see this kind of icon, like there is a Python icon for the file, but you may not see that on your computer because you need to install an add-on for showing that kind of file extensions. And the add-on is VS Code file icons. So VS Code icons. So this is the add-on is required for you in order to show the file icons based on the extension. All right, so let's close this. And let's go back to your file. All right. So now here, let's start writing the first command, which is a print command. All 
All right. Okay. So let me zoom this a little bit. All right. So this is my first Python file. Okay. So there is one more thing which you need to do here. So we need to see the status bar here. So let's go to view. So now if you look at the status bar, this is really important. Now we are able to run our Python script. But if you look at the status bar, the version which is showing here is Python 2.7.10. So that is the default version uh, which is which is shipped with Apple. Like Apple installed the default version on your Mac computer. And by default, this editor is, is picking the Python 2.x version. So that is not something which we wanted, right? So we wanted to run our scripts on, on the Python 3 environment. So for this, what we can do is go to preference and click on the settings. So once you click on settings, uh, you can search for Python path, just in the search type like Python path, and uh, you should see a key called python.python path. Now here, by default, it is like Python. So now this is what we need to change here to, to make sure our VS code editor is choosing the Python 3 interpreter, not Python 2. Now here, since it is Python, so that is the reason the, inter, the editor is choosing the Python 2 interpreter. So let's add, let's edit this setting by clicking on the edit icon and copy it to settings. So let's delete this previous. All right, so now here, let's say Python 3. Okay, and save this file. Now go back to your code. Now you see here, now it is showing Python 3.7.4. So if you want to go back to Python 2, you can actually select this interpreter, which actually updates the Python 3 to Python, and it again goes back to Python 2. But now, if you look at the status bar, it is showing as Python 3.7.4. Now this is this is the Python 3 interpreter, and this is what we wanted here. Now our editor is configured in such a way that it is, it is going to execute our Python 3 script because the Python 3 interpreter is choosed here. Now let's give a right click on this and run Python file in terminal. So when you click on that, now you will see an output, hello world here, all right? So this is how we run our first program with just only one line of code, like a print statement. Now, if you just want to make sure that uh, you're running on Python 3 interpreter, just remove the braces and run the same code. Now, this should throw you a syntax error because this doesn't work in Python 3. This is the Python 2 syntax. So run internal. So now you can see here the syntax error. So yes, we are using the Python 3 interpreter in the VS code. So this is how we set up our development environment on the Mac OS X. This is a very, very basic setup, guys. Okay, so we just downloaded Python 3 directly from the python.org website. By using the installer, we installed Python 3. But in advanced mode, we are going to use the Homebrew, which is a package management tool for the Mac OS X. And then we choose the VS code editor and we directly downloaded the VS Code installer on the Mac and we just installed the uh, IDE. Plus we also installed the Python add-on for the VS Code editor, which helps us to run our Python scripts. And this is the same step we'll be following even in the advanced mode. Now, uh, when it comes to running the programs, this is where we are going to change. There, what we try to do is we'll try to set up different virtual environments, uh, which actually chooses different Python interpreters, like one project we will we can run on Python 2 and the other project we can run on Python 3, very specific to the versions. And we can also make sure that um, those environments are within the project level setting, not at the global setting. So right now, in this configuration, like in this session, in this configuration, and we're using Python 3 and we're using Python 2, these two are globally installed right now. And we are using the global environments to run our Python code. But in advanced mode, we are not we are not going to use these global environments. We are going to use our um, uh, virtual environments, which are specific to our projects.
So that is what we are going to see in the advanced mode of uh, uh, configurations. All right. So that's all for this session. Thank you.